threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. <laughs> Hi, <Which> kids! <laughs> This episode brought to you by... That sounds like Barney. Yeah, it was like... A, it's a mix between Goofy and yeah. Barney. Is what you're Wait, Maggie! <laughs> yeah. Huh, whoa! This episode's Disney! <laughs> no. And we've been sued. Yeah, we just got Man, sued. Man, just that fast. I know. That's all... They're quick. <laughs> Closing us down. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. This we is the last episode. We went through so episode. many different voices oh. this morning in like oh my goodness. 10 minutes. Yeah. They yeah. all sucked. That, yeah, they did. Some of them were inappropriate <laughs> yes <laughs> so yes it's hard to, it's hard to switch gears sometimes yeah when you yeah. hit record go down to pg <laughs> yeah, pg-13 come yeah, on PG-13. yeah um cameron <clears throat> we're excited to be here today because we have a really interesting episode one i've been it's been like rolling around in my brain box it, for a while you it's know a, it's a great one because it does like why yeah I think like, we talked about it like like six or eight months ago, maybe yeah. like, hey, what are you thinking about? What this? is it about the apocalypse? Is, yeah. So what is it that we're talking about today? Well, we want to talk about like, why is it that we love the apocalypse? Yeah. Why do we love it? I don't know. Because it sounds horrible mm-hmm. and we would probably all die. Yeah. And um, it'd just be miserable, but there's something about it. There's something about it that just feels like, yeah, I want that. It's like toying with that idea. Like, man, yeah. maybe there's some things that could be better. Right. Maybe... You know, um, credit cards would be wiped out. Yeah. So we're going to talk about <laughs> all things, yeah. All of those possibilities of the reasons why we love it, and why it's not just us. It's not just me and Cam. Oh no, the world. The world does. The love world loves these. it. So uh, we're going to talk about and that. everything. Yeah, we're excited, but I got to tell you about BattleBox first. It is the monthly subscription box full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, BattleBox sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you'd normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here is a sampling of what users received this month. The Bleed Stop 20 gram pack. Boy. 20 G. Yeah, and then we got the Bushnell Cellular Core Cellular Trail Camera. That's hard to say. That is a Try lot saying of cellular. it. Cellular. Right cellular Core Cellular. Yeah, it's hard. Cellular. It's not easy, but all this badassness starts at just thirty four ninety nine per month. They've shipped over a million boxes and one best men's subscription box of 2020. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Get your first battle box plus a free knife when you use our code casual preppers. Listener. Reviews starts now. Dom Chandler. Dom. 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 <laughs> Here comes Dom. <laughs> dom. You dom bastard. <laughs> yeah. Now he doesn't recommend He's us not anymore. not going to listen no. to this anymore. Uh, just started listening to the podcast. Mm. It, it's given me the kick to sort of uh, to sort out my bug out bag nice. and house stuff. Beautiful. I'm. I think we figured this out. Is I'm on base. On base. Yeah. So it's nice that not everything is about guns and giant sandworms. <laughs> Funny stuff, guys. And we should do more sandworm episodes. We do though. need to talk about sandworms. Yeah. There's dune sandworms. There's, there's dune tremors. Sandworms. Yeah. There's Man, many. That's it. <laughs> that's just <laughs> that's those enough. Two big ones. <laughs> Ask the people in the stories. That's yeah, enough. Yep. Yeah. If you guys want to be a part of this portion oh, of the Star podcast. Wars. Yeah, they got sandworms too. Yeah. Go to iTunes, go to Facebook, leave us a five star review. Make it awesome. It's a mad, mad world. So, um, this this article's been going around a little bit the last few days. A few people have sent it over to to us via Instagram and Facebook, so I just thought I'd talk about it. Um, senators have just been issued satellite phones amid growing concerns of security risks. Okay. Interesting. Uh, amid growing concerns of security risk to members of Congress, more than 50 senators have been issued satellite phones for emergency communication. People familiar with the measures told CBS News the devices are part of a series of new security measures being offered to senators by the Senate Sergeant at Arms who took over shortly after the assault on the Capitol of January 6, 2021. 
The satellite phone technology has been offered to all 100 senators, CBS News has learned. At least 50 have accepted the phones. The rest of them haven't answered the emails, I'm sure, or something. <laughs> Which Senate office... My well, BlackBerry is still <laughs> yeah. working. They, they recommend senators keep in close proximity during their travels. In testimony before the Senate Appropriations Committee last month, Senate Sergeant-at-Arms Karen Gibson said satellite communication is being deployed to ensure a redundant and secure means of communication during a disruptive event. That's scary. Yeah. Um, Gibson said the phones are a security backstop in case of an emergency that takes out communications in part of America. Federal funding will pay for the satellite airtime needed to utilize the phone devices. A Department of Homeland Security ad advisory said um, satellite phones are a tool for responding to and coordinating government services in the case of a man-made or natural disaster that wipes out communication. So, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, I think it's good. Up but, in there. but is it like um you know a sign of things to come? Maybe they're, they're like, oh, there's Maybe. stuff going on. We gotta get these people. Only fifty percent of them can communicate with mm -hmm. each other. I like how the other ones That sounds about right. Yes. <laughs> Only the Democrats Only have been the... issued. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. We still use Pony Express between us and yeah. state to state. And... I'll just go out on my Porsche yell real loud, somebody use the response. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so, so stupid. There are some old suckers in yeah. there, too. It's like, geez. I don't use a phone since 1967. <laughs> I do <drew> proclamation <laughs> of all the things I need. I get out my quill pen and homemade ink, and I put it on some parchment paper, and I send it out the Stick door. Stick it in a bottle, let it flow downstream. Yeah, it'll figure itself out. <laughs> Charles have to them to see here. As long as you see praying and you're eating your mac and cheese every day, things will work out. <laughs> right. Vote Biden. Biden. Trump 2024. Biden 2024. Biden Trump 2024. <laughs> Put them both together. Yeah. Biden uh, and tapioca 2024. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the truth. Anyway. Well, on a lighter note, but a very <laughs> okay. mysterious Ooh, note. Light and mysterious. In a little town in New Jersey, oh. along a nice little river, okay. was found a hundred pounds of cooked noodles that just oh. appeared along the creek bed. What? Yeah, what? Mounds of spaghetti what? and piles of other pastas, including uh, ziti, were seemingly dumped by the stream near Veterans Park in Old Bridge, uh, New Jersey. <laughs> what? Yeah, hundred like. So weird. A former council candidate said that estimated that there had to be more than 500 pounds of pasta left, wow. um, which is insane. And Just like a bunch of pasta. Proper, yeah, look at the, look at the pictures of this. It's like what the, the like, and they're, they're like different kinds of pasta. Oh yeah, just tons of it dumped out along the riverbed. <laughs> it's like, we made too much for dinner. Yeah, <laughs> so. Obviously, uh, yeah. in social media posts, a lot of people got real creative with it. Oh, sure. Lead suspect is a guy named Al Dente. <laughs> sure. Don't yeah, forget yeah. his partner, Linguini. Mm. Um, another one wrote, it was pasta expiration. Pasta <laughs> expiration. I think it was, it's probably a marketing ploy for the new Mario Brothers yeah. movie. Yeah. But they said, we should send this perpetrator to the state penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> but it is super weird. Um, yeah. They figure... Up the road, there was um, someone that had purchased a house from their parents, and there was just all this expired pasta. And what better place to put it than back in the ground? <laughs> so just so dumped weird. it all along there. But um, yeah, anyway, that was weird news. Why not just the pour it in just the river, falling apart? Why, Why not just, just cook it, it up and eat it? I know that's it's it's pasta, but Man. Uh, but anyways, they cleaned it up real quick wow. because apparently it is toxic to like just leave it out there and ferment and get into the groundwater. Really? I don't know. That's what they said. That sounds like a made up thing. It does. <laughs> you can't leave pasta out on the ground. Well, that's the most dangerous <laughs> spill in the history of New Jersey. My gosh, <laughs> might as well be Three Mile Island out here. Michigan's like, I don't know. <laughs> that really? water's fine. <laughs> yeah. State of emergency declared by Joe Biden because of a bunch of pasta. <laughs> Ohio's going, what? Tastes like SpaghettiOs. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Help us out. But yeah, that's kind of funny. Hmm. That's interesting. And that's that. And that's that. Well, let's talk about the apocalypse, Cam. Mm -hmm. um, why we love the apocalypse. This is something that I keep thinking about. Like, what is it about the thought um, or the idea of an apocalypse that is so appealing when we know? For sure, it's gonna suck. Yeah. Like, what is it? What is it that, that draws us to stories about the apocalypse or apocalyptic themes or to just talk about it? I don't you know? know. It's just there's just so many things about 
I mean, in reality, well, our history yeah. is like we came together you know, and met each other and had same interests yeah. in like survival games and mm-hmm. survival movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So obviously, I mean, that our, po- our podcast talks about that for that right. reason, but this is why it started. It's just our common interest mm-hmm. in this. But So um, weird. I, even as a kid, like yeah. remembering some of the old movies my parents would watch, like there's one called Damnation Alley, which is about like radiation. Oh, oh that's an old book. That's a Roger Zelazny book. Is it a book? Yeah. Damnation Alley. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, the stuff like that I just remember and it sticks mm-hmm. out in my head and, and like even pretending and playing as kids is just like, mm-hmm. we're just into the world and yeah. we're the only ones. And so yeah. it is. And it's it, like, I think for me, it, it's always been like a super exciting topic. Yeah, it has. And so like, wh- I mean, what are we Possibility. Ta- <laughs> I mean, biblically too. You know, it's like, that's going to the happen. Like, there's a religious aspect to it all. So it's kind of ingrained in culture, yeah. in Christian culture. And I mean, in lots of other religions have some sort of an apocalypse and it's almost like a, something that's looked forward to. In a weird way. In huh? a weird way. My right? mom's that way. Yeah. And I'm not like... When Christ comes again, you know what I mean. Always. It's like it's always like she's this always like lamenting that it hasn't I'm happened like, yet. We'll talk to her about like house prices and the cops mm-hmm. are like, "Yeah, it's getting out of control. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till the second coming to clean up all this mess." <laughs> I'm like, so "Okay, funny. mom." Like, and and I get it in some ways. That's how my mom she talks like that. Yeah, she's she old. got rednecky. Oh, gosh, sounds like yeah. Charles. Had wonderful been. woman, wonderful mm-hmm. woman, gravelly, weird, but voice. very, very often she's mm-hmm. like. Yeah. It all going to end. I, I'm about ready for it. Yeah, I know. It's really funny that that's the case. But again, that's another, you know, that older generation too yeah. looks at it kind of the same way it's almost like a, a little bit. Yeah, right? Renewal and we'll talk about yeah. that. Yeah. And so like, what are we talking about when we talk about the apocalypse? You know, there's a lot of different things uh, that we might be talking about, but mostly it's kind of like this interruption to our everyday life by some sort of an event, mm-hmm. right? Because there's there's different types of apocalypses, and that could be a very short term. It could be a long term. It could be a complete, like, overhaul of yeah. everything, right? Um, <clears throat> it's kind of just like an event that changes the way we live and move forward kind of in our everyday life. Um, this could if be we like— don't get completely wiped out. Yes, you if know? you don't get completely wiped out. And this could be like a partial or a complete erasal of the conveniences of our modern life. Right. Because, um, like, none of these apocalypses— have us, you know, discontinuing on the same like technological grounds. No, it always forward, right? It always kind of has to change. Um, it's going to have to adjust, right? And there's kind of like this sense of danger, like Camp said, this sense of excitement, which is a really weird thing to say. Like it's yeah. exciting. I don't know what to it is think either. about it. Right? It does make you feel like yeah, kind of excited about it. Yeah, and there's like just an adjustment of focus for our daily lives. It's like everything changes. You don't continue going to work every single day. Yeah. Right. In apocalypse, that's that's not the thing. <laughs> no. It's different. So, anyways, we wanted to just kind of talk about that today. And yeah, um, man, there, there's so much to talk about. There is, and as I like trying to like keep it, you know, organized here because I could just go off for hours <laughs> talking about it. There's like things I, when I picture it in my mind, like when I think of like apocalypse, yeah. I think of like you know for some reason we're happy and we're like <laughs> in my house with like Christmas lights and it's like yeah. a nice lighting mm-hmm. and like you got yeah. generators running and you're chatting with neighbors about yeah. like important things to keep each of you safe and alive. And mm-hmm. it's like this good setting for some reason. It's like, and it's like, it's om- it's like a cozy <laughs> feeling. Almost. It really does seem that like it's on par with like a cozy Christmas type feel. It does. And I don't know why it's that like is. A, it is like a holiday. Like, yeah. And it'd be, Kind of nice. But I I totally get it that, that like, uh, you know, the dim lighting, and I don't know why that's always part of it, but it... (laughs) Yeah, but it is. It is. You know, listening to the emergency radio, and there's just some broadcast going on that's giving you, you <clears> know, <throat> this information, and, and and like Cam said, you're talking with the neighbors, and everybody's sort of in it's like it a together. Good, like, yeah, there's a real tight unity, mm-hmm. and there's no distractions. Like everybody's doing the same thing, yeah. and like on the same page, and helping. Like I'm gonna go out and scavenge and stuff. And I don't know if that's because of games, yeah, and movies mm-hmm. and different like books and stuff that have like put all that into that yeah. scenario of like you've kind of painted your own like peaceful picture about yes. it and again we know that that's not going to be necessarily the case no this is like our sort of dreamland uh, yeah. <laughs> apocalypse it could be the case but it's not necessarily going to be exactly how these are going to look but we just wanted to talk about why is it that we love that you know right and again 
people, it's not just Cam and I, it's not just you guys listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. This is a worldwide phenomenon. Um, for sure. When you look at apocalyptic movies, I, I read this article. So between 2010 and 2019, almost a hundred Hollywood movies dealt with apocalyptic subjects. And that's, you know, climate change, asteroid impacts, nuclear holocaust, all that kind of stuff. Zombie apocalypse is obviously were really big for a while. Yeah. That's a, a, about a hundred. And if you think about how much money was put into that, obviously they got money back. So people are watching those movies and that has grown since the 1950s. In the 50s, 13 movies well, like that were made. They were in a dark, like, yeah. fear. Were, yeah. So 13 movies. We're in a movies. very comfortable. 13 movies were made in the 50s. In the 60s, 24. In the 70s, I don't know, more comfortable. 39. Wow. In the 80s, it went to 40. In the 90s, it fell just slightly, which is really odd to me. What a huge I, I remember jump. That. Yeah. So, and then you see all of a sudden, you get to 20, 10, 10, there's like 100 of them. That's so, crazy. People are thinking about it. People love the thought of the apocalypse. And that's just movies. You can look at the apocalyptic books, which are like never ending. Yeah. I'm there sure. are billions of them out there. I'm obviously I'm overstating that. There's thousands of them out there. Billions. Billions and, and billions. billions. And then you look at TV shows. We all we all know Walking Dead. We all know all those types of yeah, shows, like, right? It's hard to find somebody that wasn't watching something like that exactly and then podcasts now or even there's a whole bunch of podcasts that are on that same subject so it's a never-ending thing that people are just really drawn to you know in fiction media for sure um so anyways um i i read another article which i thought was kind of interesting yeah, that one was cool yeah so a survey in britain shows that one in four people watched post-apocalyptic movies during the pandemic. During the worst, like, possible yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, something that could lead to an apocalypse. Yeah, let's watch a movie about it. Let's watch a movie about it. Like, it went up. The numbers went up. So, so uh, somebody said, watching apocalyptic movies during an apocalyptic condition serves as a coping Makes mechanism. Makes total sense. According to Joe Hemmings, a behavioral psychologist watching apocalyptic movies can make the viewers anticipate the worst case scenario and help them deal with fear they experience during a crisis. We've talked about that too, mm-hmm. of like getting into this stuff so that you can see like, how would yeah. you handle it? And how, what, would, yeah. what would be your response? We're going to talk about more of that too. So uh, apocalyptic movies also provide reassurance that everything will be okay in the end, which is kind of interesting. That is true. But uh, um, yeah, and so obviously we love the apocalypse. It's not just about movies and it's not just about books or, or TV shows. This is about a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, it's just the thought and the, and the ideas of the apocalypse and I mean, why we prep and, and why Cam and I do this podcast because we love the subject for some freaking weird yeah. reason. Yeah, there's so a lot we, about it, like we were saying. Let's get into some of those reasons because there's a whole bunch. And the first one, which, which seems so counterintuitive when you actually think about it, but the more you think about it, you're like, okay, this makes sense. It does make sense. In certain ways, um, it can actually reduce stress, the apocalypse. I, I believe that. Especially like in our minds, like thinking about it, not necessarily going to be the case when it, when oh, it all you're comes gonna down be, to it. You're going to be stressed about different things, but right. I feel like you can handle, I think a little more is going to be like head on. Right. Where nowadays it's just oh like everything all the it's time and like it's trying mess. to figure out how to take kids to sports <laughs> and get back to pick up another one. And yeah. Like that stuff, mm-hmm. I think our stress level versus like back in the day, is yep. it's just so different. It's so different. It's like I always tell my wife, like, if I could go back and live in a decade, it would probably be like the 1950s. Yeah. Because I feel like it's pretty idyllic. And I know somebody can say, well, in the 1950s, it was nuclear, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But we had enough modern conveniences to make it comfortable. Right. But not so much that it was as crazy as it is today. I don't know. Anyways, there's so there's a lot of those different time periods that I think are pretty fascinating. Yeah, like the 1900s had some really cool mm-hmm. inventions and like the start of like yeah you know um, industrialism and stuff. But like, would it really be? You <laughs> yeah, know, I don't know. To go yeah. from what we have now and our conveniences that mm-hmm. I think are also like our major distractions. Yeah. Maybe it would be better. Maybe it would be worse. You know? There's a give and take there for sure. For sure. So like we're talking about this is reducing stress, the apocalypse. Um, it's kind of a form of escapism. It kind of, it provides an escape from the, the complexities and challenges of everyday life, everyday modern life right now, right? It feels like it's an escape. It kind of gives you a break from these mundane routines 
that we're in every single day. You know what I mean? Just like you get up. I you, think you, about those often. You shower, you go to work, you come it's back. Groundhog you, day. You cut the grass, you go do some church activity, you go to cut your the kids' grass. thing. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. <clears throat> we're, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> it's like, it, it, and it gives you this sense of, like adventure um, of a new beginning in, in, in a different type of purpose for your everyday life, right? Um, thinking about it this way too, everybody listening to this, like if you are actually prepared for the apocalypse, it might actually get you in a better situation than most people True. afterwards, right? I mean, it, you might actually move up in status of living conditions relative to other people who right now might be in a higher class than you because they haven't been prepared for it, right? Right. So you might look at that and go, well, maybe that will lessen my stress because now I'm one of the top dogs in society and not these True, other people yeah. that are good Put at- Put you in a different position. Good at investing in stocks or, or <laughs> something like that. in their way ahead. Yeah, and now, now they don't have that, right? So that's that's a thing. Um. We talked about this briefly, but work could be canceled for you indefinitely. It could be over, could be as soon as that uh, gigantic earthquake hits or the asteroid hits in the Eastern Hemisphere, <laughs> um, work is done. That's the last day you got to go to that place and punch the time clock. And now, who knows, right? Yeah, I'm sure plenty, multiple people, <laughs> multiple have probably driven to work thinking, well, we should just end it. Today. <laughs> like, just you don't want to die. Yeah. You just want to, like, have, like, yeah. be done with the routine that you're yeah, doing. It's, it's like, like you, maybe you want to change. You hate your job, or maybe you don't even hate it, but you're just like, uh, yeah. I write them again. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, re I remember some of the jobs I had just driving. I'm like, I wish I'd blow a tire. Just like <laughs> set my day off in a different way. Yeah. Like sometimes be like welcome that sort of thing. Maybe like, I, maybe I have to go to the ER for an hour, <laughs> but I'm fine. Yeah. Right. Like it's just, something like and that. I th I, like, yeah, I think you see that in medicine anyway. You're yeah. just like, I mm -hmm. can see that. There's nothing wrong here, but yeah. like, I don't know. You're just stuck in this loop. and Yeah, and you don't want to go back to that job. So maybe that is enough to make you secretly, like we're talking about secretly want the, the apocalypse to happen or just the prospect of something like that is in, appealing or intriguing to you because of not having to go back to work, right? Right. Again, Cam said this earlier. Does that mountain of debt suddenly just get erased? <laughs> right. Because people hiding or living under a mountain of just gigantic debt, it feels like you'll never get out of yeah. it. And you're like, I'm never, it's just going to be there forever. But if we could just kill this economic system in one fail swoop, yeah, I wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So that kind of feels appealing to some people, yeah. right? Some are probably waiting on that. Yeah, they're just, yeah, I'll, I'll just charge it up again because I'm just hoping. Yeah, that we're going to end it. It's, it's going to all yeah, end sometime. Exactly. Um, Belief that the apocalypse will provide a sense of control and or purpose, but we're going to talk about purpose later more, but a sense of control is like, it's weird to think that that would give you a greater sense of control. It does seem weird, but but it does make sense. It does make sense. The more you think about it, at least it feels that sometimes, way. Sometimes like, even with all the job stuff, it's like, do I feel, do I feel like I'm in control of my no, life? That's the whole thing. Like, <laughs> it's like, like I'm doing all this. Uh -huh. To make sure things are good for my family and safe. Yeah. But I'm like, am I really in control here? Or is it just like, <laughs> is it controlling? I me? have to do this. Yeah. It's like, I have to have the cars. I have to have all of this stuff. Um, Gotta have internet bill. Gotta yeah. have like, just, it is, it's controlling. Like your life is out of control sometimes. It feels like other things are kind of making. So I can do. see how this would just like, yeah. Yeah. So like something goes down. Now, now your purpose is I've got to survive. Right. So now your time will be spent that way. Like it controls it down to one simple thing, but s for some reason that feels like now you're in control. Right. Right. I don't know why, but again, and I think maybe it's this next part the simpler life, a singular purpose. This, this to me is one of the biggest things about it. Like our for modern, sure. modern I think life, about it a oh ton. gosh, it's so chaotic. It's so busy. It's so stressful all the time. Like the thought of slowing down, focusing on basic needs it's like oh my gosh that sounds really appealing it does like oh i just have to worry about making sure i can eat <laughs> yeah um that it's, i have and i know this is like some people are like you haven't been through that and i know yeah, i know but yeah. it's we're talking about like what we think just the feeling of it yeah it right why it why it's appealing yeah i mean if you look at the recent popularity of homesteading and going off the grid i think that's that sort of feeling, right? right. Like, I don't want to be part of this crazy, exactly. Like, oh, I gotta do this. Like, no more social media. 
No more worrying about like your salary at work, or vacations. If you're putting your money in the right place in 401ks. the long run, four hundred one ks. You got to get the new iPhone. Your kids got to get the new iPhone. Buying a new car. You got to keep up with the Joneses next door. Yeah. I got. I got to make sure I got a beach body for my vacation. I've never had a beach body, but I know people think about that. <laughs> Not me, but other people do. You know, you got to keep up with the latest trends and news and politics yeah. and all. It's just like it's never ending. But like all of a sudden, it's, it's just overwhelming like, in so many. Anyways, that's over. Right? All you got to worry about is feeding your kids and your wife and your husband or whoever that, that sounds, is. That sounds awesome. I know. It, I'm sure it wouldn't be I know. totally awesome, but but yeah, like, and then there's just those, like I get in this like stressful situation where I'm like, I have access to all this information mm-hmm. that I could be doing and learning about every day. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I got to find time to like read mm-hmm. about some investment stuff. I got to yeah. find like, cause we have the convenience of all of this stuff. You know, yeah. in in our like, it's usually just in our hand. Like yeah. we can just pull up our phone, access all that stuff. So you feel kind of worthless if you're not using mm-hmm. that technology to its like. So I'm like, yeah, let's eliminate it. <laughs> yeah, they've even when have you seen that they've been coming out with like these dumb phones? Yeah, that mm-hmm. are just like more simple. They don't they don't mm-hmm. send you all these notifications. Right, and it's almost like information overload sometimes for sure. Right, and and you feel like. You're a piece of garbage. But you feel like you need to be part of it. Because you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's been a hard thing for me lately because I've been really like taking myself out of like news and, and politics and like even my grandma the other day is like, well, how are you going to know who to vote for? And I'm like, <laughs> I'll figure it out. There's going to be two people at the end. <laughs> yeah. I can do, I can in like 15 minutes, yeah. I'll tell you, you which You spend your whole life just watching all the debates yeah. and all the pol- political are, are you, stuff. Are you wasting your time? I don't know. You know what I mean? So it just feels like it's a lot. Right. It, it, and like it does- yeah. Does It'd be nice the, to eliminate some of that. The, does the digital modern age feel just like you can't control any of it? For sure. Right? You can't keep up with it. Is AI just going to take over and kill us all at some point? Do Probably. we just need to unplug the whole machine and say, hey, no more? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Um, this this one here, too, feels like it could be something that's um, making us feel this way. Is, is it unnatural to live life the way we're living right now? I've heard a lot of people say this. You know, we've got billions of people on Earth. Our cities are gigantic. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a a food system that's like just in time. You know, you're getting it right as it's going bad or it has tons of preservatives in it. So Um, true. We've got this digital currency. We have like, our close relationships are dwindling. They're getting smaller. Um, While social media is growing, which is a great thing in some ways, but also it's like everything's over. I hate talking on the phone. Yeah. I always have and it's worsened. You know, now I'm like, I don't even want to call people about anything. I'll send you a text. Yeah. I'll send you a text. And that's not always the healthiest thing and the best thing to do. Yeah, and so like it's... You got cancer. Text me back if you're interested to talk about it. Sorry about that. Stay survived. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like... Make appointment up front. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You kind of... It just feels like very impersonal, very like... It's not... It's just like there's less sense of purpose and all this. Like, is it in our DNA to want to struggle for survival and to rely on this small kind of close knit community. Like, is that part of like who we are as like people as a species, right? Um, like Always th- have been. Yeah. This pull towards the apocalypse might be that sort of instinctual feeling that like, Hey, um, you guys are kind of living outside of the bounds of what your ancestors and your species have done for like sure. thousands or millions of yeah. years. Right. I read a book a few years ago, ago called tribe by, by Sebastian Younger. And he kind of talks about this concept a little bit. Um, basically we all want to kind of be part of this close knit tribe. We want to rely on each other. We want to, and, and I think that sometimes like we feel like we don't have that as much. And if the apocalypse hit, suddenly we have to right like it has to be you and your family and your close friends and maybe the town you live in and like that's who you rely right. on right and there's you're not worried about the other seven billion people on earth i don't know it's, it's it, i think you can't it, see it you can't, you can't hear about it so yeah it would be like peaceful in a way yeah and it, it, it just feels like our modern system builds up pressure Mm-hmm. On all of us, like you got to have that good career, pressure to be a good family, exactly. Person, pressure to have money and and stuff to show for that money. Uh, your religion puts pressure for on sure. you. Uh, you know the latest whatever trend in society puts pressure on you. The news cycle, you it's know? always changing. And it's, oh my There's gosh. always new things, and it's just like ugh. yeah. It's it's it. It feels like there's a lot of pressure, and if we could just get one nice apocalypse to hit, boom, the pressure's gone. And again, it, it's pressure 
that's probably moved over to a different thing, but it feels like at least it's a single focused pressure. Yeah. You know, it, it, again, it's, this is a lot of this is in your head. It might not be great, but that's why it's appealing. That's why we love the apocalypse, why right. we like to talk about it, why we like to watch things about it. Anyways, that's kind of one I of like, the issues. Man, all of those, yeah, it makes, <laughs> makes a ton of sense. Like, it does, yeah. The stress relief, even though in a stressful situation, I feel like it. Yeah. it's just, you can focus a lot more on mm-hmm. the problems in front of you because you have to. Yeah. To and, survive. I, and I know that my wife is probably listening right now, shaking her head like, uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> this, this sounds horrible. I don't <laughs> yeah. want this. Right. And there's some and people that are that probably way. Probably will be horrible. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I think there's some good there that could come of it. Right. Um, in a way. Mm-hmm. But um, one thing that I always think about too is in whatever scenario or whatever happens, like, when can I put what I know mm-hmm. and what I've stored to the test. Oh yeah. Can I survive this? Can I do this? Every time I'm watching a movie or, or something, I'm uh, that's like an apocalyptic one or survival. Mm-hmm. I'm always thinking like, what would I do? And, and could I, could I, would I be able to, to like protect myself and my family yeah. in this? And it's kind of like that manly, like natural, like survivalism type of thing. Like, Am I a man? Yeah. yeah. Could I do this? Can I live up to like being a man and like the head of a family? Yeah. And in a scenario where everything's collapsing around you, yeah. can you stand up and be the leader and the, and the, the patriarch and the, yeah. you know, that person that can take care of their family on their own. That's why like I loved it's like scary Greenland. to think about, but I'm like, like could the, I do that? The movie Greenland, like it really makes you think about that because the guy is just like a normal dude, right? Yeah. And he's got this family and he's got to get him through this situation. Like, oh man could I do all the things he does? And obviously it's, it's Hollywood. So that a lot of stuff is crazy, right. but the, the thought of it is I do the exact same thing you're talking about. Like, how could I do this? Mm-hmm. Could I make it through? What would I do? You yeah. know? And I think that's like every, all of us think that. Mm-hmm. And we're like, we're preparing all this stuff. Like, and I get all panicky about it. Cause I'm like, <laughs> what do I know that would actually, you know, allow mm-hmm. me to use and, and survive better than, you know, than I did before. Like right. I have all this stuff. Do I actually know how to actually apply it and use mm-hmm. it? And would it even help me? Or am I just collecting a bunch of crap? Yeah, I think that all the time. I'm like, am I just, Seriously. do I just have a ton of tools and I can't do anything with them? Yeah. Um, so yeah, th- this is that moment of like, can I really survive? And, um, it's kind of an adventure for people. Mm-hmm. And that, that real man thing, it's like, am I going to be able to, am I going to like shy away from volunteering to help? Oh, to yeah. like be part of your community more mm-hmm. and do more. Cause right now, you know, it's like we live in this society where like a lot's taken care of for us. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't really need the social aspect outside of work because, yeah. you know, I can do and, and enjoy my like life without that. But when it comes to like helping others, are you going to be a better person or are you going to yeah. be a, a worse person? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be even more lazy and don't want to do anything? Or are you going to like take advantage of people more? Like it just makes you think a lot more of like, you know, what, what am I going to become? That's it. We're going to talk about that a little bit later too. Right. Like it's like the true nature of you or of a person. Like there's no way to not see what it's going to be yeah. in one of those situations. Right. It's going to shine through one way or the other. Yeah. Right? Your true self. Is yeah, your come true out self is going to come out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apocalyptic, apocalyptic narratives often involve like survival skills, resor- mm-hmm. resourcefulness, and overcoming challenges in extreme conditions. And, we, you know, we, we always think about that. It's like, that's what we do for recreation is like, you know, can I do, <laughs> yeah. um, can I hike this trail, you know, mountain bike for, you know, you're doing all this stuff just for enjoyment, but when you have to do it for an actual survival mm-hmm. scenario it's 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 different and it makes you worry <laughs> but it also is like man can i do it am i up to that and i like i like to think i am mm-hmm. you know yeah. but even when i go camping and i'm like two days in i'm like this kind of sucks right like it's yeah. not very comfortable i don't sleep well it's hot i don't have a fan mm-hmm. you know you just kind of like so um in a way you're like i kind of want to strip myself away mm-hmm. from society and, and my comforts to be more manly like there's a lot of people that do this and I'm, I'm like, man, they, like, yeah, they would do much better than me because they go and hunt for weeks and they're out in the, you know, middle of nowhere and right. they know how to do it. So it's like, we're getting, we're getting soft. All of us exactly. are. And, and I do know I'm soft. And I think that sometimes makes us, um, 
Well, I mean, you can see, you know, more than anybody, not saying this is you, but you've seen it in clinic, like how many people have mental health issues. Right. And I think part of it is because we're so damn soft. We don't. We don't have to struggle face challenges for anything. We don't learn to overcome. Yeah. Um, and, and it just breaks you apart. Right. And it's not necessarily, they can't do those things. It's just that they we haven't don't. had the opportunity to do it and they're not forcing themselves to do it. And it's we hard live to in a society that. to even do it. Like, yeah. you don't live... You know, no. you're a weirdo if you go out and like, yeah. you know, live in a shack away from technology. It's like, that's a weird, don't go near him. Don't go talk to that But dude. that person could probably live yeah. way longer into the apocalypse than anybody else because yep. they, they don't, they're not dependent on all of our mm -hmm. nice, convenient lifestyle. So this is, this is the thing that I think a lot about is like, am I self-sufficient? Mm -hmm. Can I do this yeah. stuff on my own? Am I a man? Can I survive in the wilderness with my family? Yeah. Or like even a, just at home through a bad, bad, you know, SHTF situation, yeah. some sort of apocalyptic, I'm at home. That's the one that I always... Can I really apply the things that we've yeah. talked about for the last five years? Yeah. Can I apply... <laughs> Can we do without electricity for three to six months or something? Right. And could we get through it? I don't know. Something about that is appealing. It is appealing. In some way, shape, or form. And You're I don't just know like, why. I wish I wouldn't have become soft. Yeah, I know. And so yeah. if you're forced into becoming... Yeah. You know, you'd actually see what you could do. Yeah, exactly. Like me. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think, and again, this, this piece here is huge for me. And, and uh, the more I researched this, the more I thought about it and wrote thoughts down, this was one of the biggest ones, the community and family building, for right? Sure. Um, it, it, we talked earlier about apocalyptic settings and stories. They kind of provide a stage for examining the depths of human nature. Like it really is. They explore like how people and groups will respond in these crazy extreme situations that it's going to show you the best and the worst. We've seen it in every one of those apocalyptic movies. There's always the good guy, but there's always that, you know, um, the bad guy as well. It's the kind of the main crux of the story. Does the guy become good or does he go the bad path or mm -hmm. how does, how does this go? Right. So this kind of exploration, it could be really thought provoking it can lead to reflections on our own values and our behaviors you know how am i going to handle this how would what would i do in this situation um but for me again the big uh, appeal of the apocalypse for me is building that small close knit community it's just it i don't know what it is it just feels like i want that so bad sometimes yeah. right it's like the thought of like shrinking your world down to a small group you're relying on each other so whether this is just like my five person family or as big as our small town here in Vernal, like all of us kind of together right. doing the thing. Right. It's really appealing. Like, you know, like Cam said, you're knowing your neighbors, you're talking to them, you're helping each other. You're forming little groups to get things done that need to get done somehow. Uh, you're protecting each other. Uh, it just feels like in our current situation, it's really like every man for himself. Just get your, get what you can it is. get. It's exactly get right. Get what you can get. And if you have to, you know, push your neighbor over to get it, go ahead. Yeah. That's step fine. on some throats. Yeah, step right. on some throats. Do what you gotta do. There's like there's not a whole lot of trust. Uh just get what you can get from every situation. So yeah. that camaraderie, I think, is a huge thing that people are missing in their lives. And sometimes you feel like if the apocalypse hit, I would be forced into um, a situation where I'm going to have that camaraderie. You just can't lone wolf it. We've talked about that. No, yeah. You're not going to last very long. Yeah. But I feel like I, we do get a taste of this sometimes, like with this podcast audience, I feel like there's a little bit of that. Like we're all Me like, too. we're all kind of, ha uh, 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 of the same mind with some of this stuff and yeah. we're all trying to help each other as much as we possibly can. The listeners are also awesome and they're awesome to each other and yeah. we've got these different groups and it, it feels a little bit like that, you know, and it as does. weird as it is, I get it um, as well from like my jujitsu teammates at, at the gym. I, I feel like we're all like trying to kill each other, but help each other get better at killing yeah, each other become and tap in much and, tighter. Yeah. So I just think it's a really cool, it, it's a thing that appeals to me with the apocalypse. Yeah. Um, and again, as I was prepping for this episode, I kept thinking like, what is it like to me personally that I just, I really drawn to these apocalyptic scenarios and SHDF. And I think it's just that closer family. Um, it's, it's like a less distracted day-to-day -day life, having the full attention of my family and friends. Yeah. Like, there's you don't have jobs. You don't have these extracurricular activities. You don't have TV and video games. It's like us versus the apocalypse as moving forward. And it just something about that is so damn appealing. And it is. I don't know why. Yeah. It's not like, I don't feel like my friends or my family are ignoring me in any way. 
but yeah. it just feels like it's or like you a, want them to ignore you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but it just it feels like you would get so much closer, and you know, I think it would be much. Different the relationships too. would be better. And I, I think know. with like the other the other two things we talked about, it's like reducing stress. Like that's a good thing, but it might not be. It might give people more stress. And yeah. then the self reliant, um, you might not be that prepared, and it might be a nightmare. Mm-hmm. There's nothing bad about community and family. Like yeah, people are gonna grow closer no matter what it might not be a huge group and you might have some a-holes but Mm -hmm. for the most part like i think that your like community that you live in and Mm -hmm. family they're gonna grow stronger so i think this one unlike the others is a guarantee like yeah i would hope so i would think so too i mean for the most part Mm -hmm. i really think watching like what people went through and even through the pandemic, like the needs mm-hmm. of like people in my neighborhood and, and it was just different. Like we, yeah, you almost we, we got, really did care about, there was a taste of it then, right? It was a little bit. You like, were kind of worried more about like others. You, you didn't want to yeah. hear some other family was sick. Like it yeah. made you feel, you're like, gosh dang it. Like what, what can, we, can do? we do? Like, yeah. and I, it's sad. We just don't think about that enough now. That's funny. And I think this yeah. will push us more that way. The That's majority, true. there'll still be pieces of crap out there. Yeah. Um, but I do think it will ha- help us to be more reliant on yeah, others. I like that. Yeah, there definitely was a taste of that during COVID, and I think we also got a little bit of a taste of it, like right after nine eleven. Yeah, you remember how like everybody felt like we were together. Yeah, like I remember F just thinking this. differently yeah. about like, man, life's short, and you just mm-hmm. want to be like closer to people. And yeah, yeah, that's maybe wanna... that's what too. Yeah, you 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 kind of see the the finiteness of life you're like oh we're gonna die this is an yeah. apocalypse holy crap right i better like enjoy every second with my kids and my friends and my my community because yeah it, it could it's all I, very even fragile. in some like financial books i've been like reading there's several of them where the in like somebody's like you know set it up so it's perfect mm-hmm. for them in the end that would be great but um for the most part, they're like, we traveled, we did this and that, but when we it ultimately came back, we wanted to just have more time to be with our friends and family. And yeah. I, that makes sense to me. It's like, mm-hmm. when, you, when you come down to the end, it's like, you want to enjoy the company of other people. Yeah. And so, this, I think that apocalypse would yeah. kind of kick you closer. And it's, a, it's crazy that, like, you can't just do that now. Like, well, why are, why are, so weird. Why are we thinking about the apocalypse so to make busy. that happen? I know. Everything's so busy. Yeah, so, like, we and just... And it isn't, but it is. Yeah, I know. Gosh, just dang, make it that it's way. crazy. The last thing on this part was kind of the removal of classes, the gap between the poor or the rich, right? I mean, there's obviously still going to be some of this. I think... And, I think for a good period, it will be kind of leveled. It will, yeah. I mean, in every story, unless you're in a helicopter flying <laughs> news, I know. In every one of these like apocalyptic stories, there's like you know some dude that comes along and builds that post-apocalyptic mafia, and yeah. he takes over, right? So that's that stuff is there. But for the most part, if we're going to survive, there's going to be a lot of sharing. There's going to be a lot of helping. There's going to be a lot of community to get through. Money's going to be scarce or not used at all, depending on whatever this apocalypse right. is. So it's going to be trading goods and skills and labor and all that kind of stuff. So it feels like maybe that solves some of those problems, if that's something that, that you think about a lot, right? Um you know, in, in a short term, that's not going to be the case. But if it's a long term, yeah, if you're rich in a short term, that's, that money is going to serve you well. But in a long term, maybe that's something that it appeals to you. It's like, I, I hate this. Like, there's a guy like Elon Musk that may has billions and billions of dollars, and I can barely afford a one-room apartment in Taco Bell once a week, right? <laughs> it pisses you off. and maybe It does. It makes this you super is frustrated. why you feel like, hey, I want that to happen. Yeah. You know? But the thing know. is, like, right now, people can pay for different trade when, when yeah. it, it, like you, like you were saying, mm-hmm. you're going to be able, you're going to want to rely more on people's skill yeah. instead of like, I'm not going to pay you. Like I know you're valuable and it makes people feel more valuable. You yes. know, it's like, I think there'd be a lot less like feeling like you're worthless and mm-hmm. that there's no purpose for you because yeah. you're going to have some purpose in some way different from yeah. than it's ever been. So totally agree. I think that community thing's a huge one. So, mm-hmm. um, speaking of huge, Cybercrime is crazy. Big and a huge. <laughs> um, but really, like, uh, so cybercrime, it's always there mm-hmm. haunting you, stalking you. At some point, um, you're probably going to get hacked. Um, you're going to lose some information or the business you work for or something. It happens all the time. Like, our hospital recently had this problem. Um, mm-hmm. Surfshark is a way to protect yourself mm-hmm. easily at home, on your device, computer, uh 
uh, handheld, Game Boy, whatever. If it connects to the internet, Surfshark will protect you. You basically just go Gray Man online. You're going online connecting to a server in a different location, so it can't be traced back to you. Um, it keeps you safe from malware, phishing, uh, obnoxious emails, and unsafe ads that you might click on. Pretty cool, and it's easy to use. Uh, you can get a full 27 months for less than 60 bucks if you use our casual preppers promo Link code. Link code, yeah. It, seriously, I, I've tried several of them. Even phones have them built in now, mm-hmm. but none of them run as smooth and as easy as Surfshark. Plus, I like that it... it um, I lose the internet if it disconnects. Mm-hmm. Like features like that, you're not going to find beautiful um, very easily. So go and get yours for the next two and what three months, two years, three months. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably when the apop- apocalypse is going to happen during one part of that, right? Exactly. So you might as well just be protected all the way up until then. So get go and get yours. Shark. Okay. So rebirth and renewal. Yeah. So mm-hmm. some people, and this kind of blends in a lot to what we've talked it about does. above. But this might be that time for a full restart. Like a, <laughs> wherever you're at in life now, the apocalypse is going to allow you to either completely reinvent yourself mm-hmm. and go a whole new direction. Um, or, I mean, it, it may, may take you deeper into uh, yeah. wherever the you're The abyss of your worst. life. Yeah. But for some people, it's a chance to reinvent and to actually desire to get away from their past and even their present. So... It's a, it's a time where they can just reshape their life. And that, that was the only opportunity they had. It's like yeah. everything has to end and reset. Because it does feel like it's hard to completely change everything. Because you get stuck. You do. You get stuck because, like, I have to keep doing this job. If I don't, I can't eat. I can't have this. Blah, 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 right, blah, blah. Right, Like, how? what am I supposed to do? I just stop and switch midstream? Like, you can't. It's, it feels impossible. You can't. No. Yeah. And communities and society is all heading in kind of a, you know, at times it's all pulled in one direction. Mm-hmm. And you see it all the time. People are trying to make a difference in some way. But, like, how successful are most of those yeah. <laughs> attempts? They're not. They, they don't really help that much. Not saying you shouldn't try, but mm-hmm. uh, this is when you really could make that difference. But sometimes you would wonder, would it really be like that utopia that you would yeah. think, like, let's reset everything and let's go back and kind of start anew. Um, yeah, so that there's may like, not take us in the right direction. Yeah, so there's like a large scale renewal. Yeah, like of society as a whole, right? Yeah. And, and that's probably more what um, I was going to get to. Right. Okay. Yeah, but there's like there's two. There's the large scale, but there's and then there's also also the small scale. Like yeah. You yourself. Yeah. So the rebirth. Yeah. So um, and that's the thing is like you're you're changing your ways and starting mm-hmm. over new which is great but then yeah you've got to think the whole world is going to be doing that now yeah and mm-hmm. so can you can it be good can it go in a better direction will there you know will we learn from history in 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 good ways that's the problem it's Probably like not. now i know it, it, that's what makes me worry about it too but on a smaller scale, scale uh will we truly move beyond like our cattiness and <laughs> being like a, yeah you know just the people that some of us have become and, and you know, keyboard uh, uh, commandos and, and just attacking and, and, and only commenting negatively. Can we get away from that? It's like, in it my mind, like, like exactly what you're saying there, like, it all, you know, everything is dead. It, we're, we're starting completely over. It feels like all of a sudden there would be, we got Republicans on this side of the room and Almost Democrats instantly. on this side. Like, instantly. Yeah. That's what would There's happen. separation. It doesn't make sense. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't want that. Let's stop doing Republican, Democrat. Let's stop doing, you know, right. whatever that is. That's the whole point of yeah. what's going on. But you this feel like... This could be a good time for that. Yeah. But it you feel be, like that's what would happen. <laughs> I'm sure it like would. Like, right back there into There would be it. different little groups. And even through history, like... Um, I thought that was when we were reading the stoicism, the book, the, which one was it that we all read? Meditations. Meditations. Yeah. Just listening to, um, how the people were then and not worrying about this and that. I'm like, man, society tends to just drift right back into like. Exact same stuff. Same stuff. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you can and Mm -hmm. you will. Like, it's a good time during an event like this to, to change your ways and to Mm -hmm. change who you are and to, you know. Hopefully society will follow like that. Um, Apocalyptic, oh my gosh, apocalyptic (laughs) scenarios often involve the idea of a new beginning or a chance for humanity to start afresh like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And it could be in a good way and it could be in a bad way. Um, But 
the one thing is like we're products of culture. We can't step outside of it right now. It's too mm-hmm. hard. And if you if you do, you have a huge group attacking you in this way and then that way. And I think that this could be the opportunity. It's like we all need each other. Mm-hmm. We all need to work together. Like maybe that's the thing that you like the most. It's like this is the only chance for society to change is by just wiping it out yeah. and just starting over. Um, maybe you're obsessed with the destruction. You just want to, you know, of to of destruction and you just want it all to end anyway. Yeah. But I do think that that's one thing with the apocalypse that makes makes it interesting to me is like we have all this like garbage going on with society and the mm-hmm. changes and accepting this group and new groups popping up and them wanting you to accept them, but they're not going to accept your old ways. And it's mm-hmm. just like, what a mess. Like maybe this is something that will change with uh, an apocalypse. Maybe. And that kind of makes me interested, but or it maybe, could just go right back into it. Or maybe it's just the same stuff on a really smaller scale right. because you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. But again, it that's I think that's the appeal. Could it change? I don't know. I don't know. That's the this appeal. This one's kind of interesting to think about. It's just like, mm-hmm. could be a renewal for yeah. us and society and change our ways to become more dependent, like we were talking about with the community and you, you just being more involved in people's lives and caring mm-hmm. and not attacking them because you don't have a device that can hide, you can hide behind and stuff like that. Yeah, so it exactly. could be a really good thing, but definitely could. It could go way backwards because as we've seen, we've been eliminating history <laughs> that we don't want to learn from. Yeah. And so yeah. it could just go back into natural man and <laughs> turn yeah. into just worse than what we have. Definitely could. But it's just interesting to think about like that one, I feel like it could save society or mm-hmm. it could just worse in society yeah i think uh, again this last point i want to make is a big one Uh, a sense of purpose we've danced around this a little bit already but um i think you have to have a sense of purpose it's it's like essential to live like a full happy life and today it's it's hard to find it for some people like like what like other than just like existing and going to work and coming home and eating food and watching Netflix. Like, what is your purpose? Like, what is it? it, it Define my day. Yeah, I know. But it's like, not for, this isn't necessarily for everyone, but for some people, it's really hard to find, like, what it, why am I here? What am I doing? The apocalypse kind of gives you a clear, defined, shared purpose with everybody around you. Yeah. Right? You can work towards it. Um, and like, yes, now you can get that from your family from maybe your religion or your career. But for some people, it's not enough or it just doesn't work or it doesn't make sense to them, right? So, like, the thought of an apocalypse gives that to you. Uh, It creates a clear-cut line between good and evil. And, like, right now, those lines are pretty blurred. It kind of feels like anyways, right? Uh, Like, it's survival. It's death. (laughs) It's going to define you one way or the other. You're going to live or you're going to die. Yeah. Right? It's very simple. So you have to... Your purpose is to make sure that you're on the live side not the die side. Um, you know, what kind of person are you? Again, this is going down to that human nature. When there's no bills to pay, when there's no job to go to, when there's no other things, like these clear-cut rules of civility and society, how, well, how are you going to do it? What, what, what are you going to be, you know, going through that? Are you going to take on the burden of, like, rebuilding the arts or something in your, in your little community or teaching or uh, designing a new form of government, whatever it is, is that going to be your new sense of purpose? Yeah. Right? There's a lot of different ways, and, and that's a lot like that renewal and uh, like you were talking about. But that yeah, sense of purpose. society, you, and yeah. community and everything. Yeah. But that sense of purpose is big, it I is. think, and it, and it kind of helps people give them an instantly a sense of purpose. Yeah. yeah. And this, so this is my thought on like, and I could be just way off here, but mm-hmm. I feel like, the apocalypse happens and we have this like chaotic time where we don't know we're not we're trying to figure things out Mm -hmm. so depression's like right here now you know and i feel like it's gonna spike a bit Mm -hmm. and then i think it's gonna go way down and it's gonna come because people are gonna have more purpose they're gonna have a reason to live they're gonna fight for that reason to live and they're gonna be more involved with um socializing with their groups and and the groups are going to be more concerned about their lives. So Mm -hmm. I honestly think that's what would happen. I honestly think the general population depression Mm -hmm. and mental illness is going to go down. Yep. That sounds weird, but I think it'll like, it'll kind of spike for a minute Mm -hmm. for anxiety and, and unsure they'll be unsure and scared. And then it's just going to get better because people are going to be more involved in each other. Yeah. Because if you don't get involved, 
you die. You're dead. You die. So like, so now it's here. You don't feel like you can find that. No. That's what's so crappy in the world today. It's just like you can just. Exist. I don't have a purpose. It's super confusing. You yeah. can ask fifty different groups, and they'll all have a different um, mm-hmm. uh, take on it. And you just don't get that care. And, and nor do those groups really care about you. They just want you to be part of their. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you can literally just exist in an apartment and never leave. Yeah. Yeah, so you could have your food brought to you. You can work from from home. You can talk to whoever. Right, like you right. just you could exist in an apartment by yourself and never see anybody. And there's yeah. people who are that way, right? Yeah, and they like, find bodies all the time like that. It's pretty yeah. depressing. Yeah, it's super depressing. Yeah, yeah. But I I do think like I think mm-hmm. you would see like this improvement in mm-hmm. in a general depression and anxiety, which sounds so backwards, but <laughs> it does, I really think it, it would. Like it's because of this, like you were saying, I think it gives people a sense of purpose. I agree. Um, I have a sense of purpose right now and it is to tell you about element. Um, because I just got a new box of the grapefruit flavor, which is now open to everybody. Oh my gosh, it is delicious. And box is open in your house and no, everybody no, no, come no, no. in and get some. It, it's, a, it's a limited time thing. Grapefruit. Um, and it is, mm-hmm. I didn't know it was limited. Jeez. Yep. But if, if you didn't know, Cam, electrolyte deficiency or imbalances, they can cause headaches, cramps, fatigue, weakness. Those are all bad things. As people who want to be prepared for and ready for anything ahead, the last thing you need is something that will slow you down when you need to be ready the most. That's why we at Casual Preppers have teamed up with Element. That's L-M-N-T. It's a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. It's formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following a keto, low-carb, or paleo diet. We think Element is perfect for bug-out bags, EDC kits, and all that kind of stuff. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio. That's 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Right in that sweet spot, Cameron. Mm. Poop better than think better. Oh my gosh. The Navy SEAL teams use it. Sniper teams use it. Marines all use it. Casual preppers can get a free element. Uh, casual preppers listeners, not just us, you guys, can get a free element <laughs> sample pack when you make any purchase through our exclusive casual preppers link. That's in our bio. That is in the show notes and all that. The element sample pack includes one packet of every flavor. That way you can try them all. And you can say, hey. That's the best way to do it. I like this one. Uh, They offer no questions asked refunds on all orders. You don't even have to send it back. This offer may be claimed by first time and returning Element customers. You guys, I just used it. I got a free sample pack. (laughs) Yep, I've used it too. So this offer is exclusively available through VIP Element Partners. You're not going to find it anywhere else. There's not going to be promo codes. You've got to follow our link. So go to drinkelement.com slash casual preppers get your order and your free sample pack that is drink element.com slash casual preppers it's funny because cam and i were just talking about element before we started the podcast and how it's like it's a weird craving for it it's sometimes weird, it's so weird your body's like get it i need Tastes so good get it in my belly yeah, yeah. it's it's good stuff it's mm-hmm. good stuff so i mean kind of just wrapping this up cam um just reflecting on like all the reasons why we love this stuff yeah and there's so many yeah. Um, and, and again, I think a lot of it, like Cam said, it harkens back to our youth in the, in the movies we watched and the, the books we read or the video games that we played. Yeah. Um, it, those are just always the stories that like r- really I liked the most. Yeah. You know, I guess there's one part I didn't even mention that I am always interested in the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I'd like to just go into a store and try things <laughs> out. Yeah. You know, just when mm-hmm. you're actually scavenging, mm-hmm. you got this like open world of like, yes, do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some risks there and everything, but yep. that is part. I always think about that. I'm like, man, there was like this abandoned target. You just go in there. Oh my gosh. Just yeah. Have a heyday. Just a world with but that's, less that, parameters. That comes back stuff. to this, like you were saying, a lot of that comes back to the movies I've seen. Mm-hmm. Just like, man, it looks so fun. Oh my gosh. So not just only the scenario and the the like again, my favorite scene in Red Dawn when they they roll up to the store, the dad the guy's store and they just start oh, throwing yeah. stuff in the truck. Yeah. It is the best scene. Yeah. Because something about that is just like, oh, I, I just take whatever I want. Right. And I'm going to use this stuff for the next several months to survive this apocalypse. Yep. Why is that appealing? I can't I figure know. it out. But it is. Yeah. The other thing is like the cities that are just covered in green. Yeah. There's animals running around mm-hmm. yeah. and it's quiet. There's it's no quiet. sound. There's no oh, horns. Man. There's no cars. I'm like, yeah. that sounds pretty sweet, actually. Oh, man, it does. 
And again, we're, we're saying this, you know, take all this with a grain of salt because we understand that. Because we believe movies and movies yeah. are accurate. And But like, I know that, you know what else I love doing? Coming home after work in an air-conditioned home and watching Netflix. <laughs> like, I like that I know. as well. Yes, I do too. So, the air conditioner is by far the yeah. thing I protect the most. Uh, so we're saying all this knowing that it's sort of like there's some cognitive dissonance going on right now. Yeah, like exactly. That's I, I I'm really love the the thoughts of it, but maybe when it gets down to it, I would hate it. Yeah. But again, that's that's what we're talking about. That's the whole discussion. We're having it doesn't today. matter that I can just play with that thought, right? I mean, stop playing with your thoughts. <laughs> Get out of the corner. Stop playing with but your yeah, thoughts. But yeah, like I feel like it, it could, there could be some great things that could come of it and yeah. more unity and all that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of it's shaped and painted in my mind yeah. from Hollywood, which isn't good. It really is. Like, but yeah, maybe, maybe that's the, what we want to talk about. Maybe the thing I really want is just like sitting in a dim lit room playing cards with my kids, knowing that in the morning I'm going to go hunting for our breakfast. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going like, to work. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe it's just that you're not going to work. Maybe it's just all about not going to work. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Sometimes be, it that does. That could be part of it. I don't know, guys. I want to I want to hear from you guys, though. Like, we should do a post maybe this week and just say, hey, what is it that you guys... Yeah, maybe you're just full-on preparedness and, and you just... You want to like, shoot somebody. The apocalypse just, yeah, puts you yeah. there. But what other things? Yeah, what other things? Is it just 556? Five, five, yeah. Or is it also or is other it just 223? 223. Two, 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 <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. The nine millimeter. Is it just that or is it, or are there other things? Cause I really want to well, know. Well, the zombie apocalypse obviously interests yes. me because I'd love to just like yeah, take shoot some zombies. That people. It's like practicing, but it's a live walking without, target that's dangerous. Without feeling the remorse of killing a person. <laughs> right. Right? Like that would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. But but again, yeah, running through Walmart and just taking whatever I want. Oh, yeah. That sounds great. Riding a bike to the back. Yeah. And then throwing it all in the basket, mm -hmm. riding up front, throwing it in my truck. Just just like getting up in the morning and saying, walking dude, out scuba gear on. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Getting up in the morning and telling my wife and kids, uh, Cam and I are going to go scavenge for the day. We'll be back later. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's what we're doing so for fun. the day. <laughs> I don't know. Again, we probably sound like idiots. If society was smaller. Yeah. It, but yeah. I don't know. But that. It, but those are things I think about. Yeah, me too. Well, so. that's it. You got anything else, Cam, on that? No, I don't have anything else on oh, that. Beautiful. Well, let's, go, let's look at a couple of boxes we just got. I mean, Tack Pack's not going to be in the apocalypse, but it is here now. So let's talk about the latest Tack Pack. <laughs> I don't know. They might. They found out They figure out a like... way to do this for so friggin' cheap that I don't get it. You know, the paper. Uh, there it the is. Paper. The first item is the Power Tax Saber flashlight. Ooh, I didn't even see that. Where is it? I don't know. It's in there somewhere. Oh, it's a flashlight. Yeah. I thought this was a pin. It's a pen light, probably. That's yeah, cool. pretty cool. And then we got the Sog Cash Card. That is a minimalist, minimalist's dream knife. It goes in your wallet. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Then we got the Range Ready Bulldog Tumbler. Yeah, boy, put in your good, good, good drinky drink in there. Look at that. It's just sexy. It is sexy. It's pretty sexy. I like it. Okay. Whoa, hey. Hey, uh, here we go. <laughs> That's a good one there. Yeah. Um, then we got the Nelson Manufacturing FDE mag release button. Yeah. You like we, guns, you love this button. Then we got the tactical taco sticker. I Actually, this is a pretty cool sticker. It's a taco, but it's tactical. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty bad. Huh? That is the latest tack pack. Use our code Casual Preppers. You're going to get a free $40. Pretty much a whole free box. $70 machine made part. Yep. And then we also have the latest Going Gear EDC Club. They always got some, some good nasty nasties in there for us, you know? Yeah. Usually. Nasties. Nasty, nasty. Um,. Jeez, you're making a freaking a racket. Turn. I know <laughs> I am. I stop making that racket over there. Boys. I wish Apocalypse would come so he'd stop making that racket. Yeah, idiot. Uh, we got the Ace Beam P17. Where's that Ace Beam? It's a uh, it's flashlight. Oh, hello. Defender P17. Oh, hero. What does the sucker go up to you? That's it all. Goes I care up about. to. Um, how many lumens? lumen output of forty nine hundred? How many lumens you got? Forty nine hundred. Wow, fourteen hundred and fifty nine feet of beam throw. Jeez, you all about throw, the beam throw. All about that beam throw. When you're bugging around, yeah. you want to shoot that beam throw. Bugging around, you need that beam throw, boy. Um, then we got the Cancept Corvid T two O zero O eight five. Stop reading the barcode. Designed by Justin Coke. 
Oh, really? Medium size folding cleaver knife. It's a weird looking little stubby monker. I don't know. St- I was gonna say monkey, and I was gonna say bugger. And I, I got like, monkey. I like I got stubby monk- monker. <laughs> stubby monker. Flip that open. Oh man, that's scary. Mm. Major Barbara. <laughs> Let me shave your body. That looks like a. Yeah, it's cool. That's pretty rad. And then we got the S R R M Mecca nine two two five. It's a folding knife. It's sleek. It's reliable. It cuts stuff. <laughs> D two steel blade. There's a knife putting in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't get it open, can you? God didn't get use that another... cleaver knife. Oh, I should use that cleaver knife. Yeah, cleave it open. All right, what's the other thing while I'm getting this over? The last, uh, then we got a couple more things. Then we got the Frontline Medical Defense Adventure Mini EDC. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a little uh, med kit. I like that. Natural gloves, gauze, band aids, sting swab. Good little sting swab. Good gauze. Oh. <laughs> CPR mask, their mama. That's crazy. That's pretty rad, huh? Vacuum sealed all that in. And then we have the Infinity Cuts and Creations 5x5 wooden tray. This you put on your your nightstand and you put your cool little EDC stuff in there. Nice. Pretty cool. That's pretty fancy. Yeah. Smell good. Um, Is that theater? (laughs) Is that pine? Yeah. That's Aspen. That's Aspen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways, that is the latest Going Gear EDC. Is that all we got? We got something else. What What else we got? Oh, we got a little, uh, the ETA bottle. Is that ETA? Yeah. What is it called? I can't see the thing. You're ETA. Right. <laughs> I don't know what that stands for. It stands for uh, <laughs> extraterrestrial asshole. <laughs> the ETA alkalizing portable water filter. Yeah, so it filters your water and alkalizes your water to where you want it. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, so we're going to test that out, aren't yeah. we, Cam? Got all kinds of stuff. ETA. Yeah, and then we also got those uh, some spy survival cards. We're gonna have to check them out. Yeah, what are they called? I can't tell you. They're spy cards. Yeah. They are the spy plus survival playing cards. Former CIA officer Jason Hansen reveals spy and survival secrets that could save your life. That's kind of cool. So when so you're you can, playing cards, you can learn stuff. You get straight flush in, get some disguise. There's a lot of stuff on, on those. probably. You know. whole book in one card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So those are pretty cool. Yeah. We're excited about those. It's time for the quick and dirty medical tip. So real quick, I'm just going to, uh, this might be boring, okay. but I thought it'd be good. I'm going to share a little portion of the Prepper's Medical Handbook. Um, sorry, Prepper's Medical Handbook. William W. Forge. <laughs> yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did. It sounded wrong. <laughs> I'm like, am I reading medical the hand- wrong book? I mean, Prepper's Medical Handbook. No, no, so Prepper's Medical But yeah, handbook. so we we talked about recently the uh, um, doing your own first aid kit yeah. and what to throw in there. I did, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> What'd you do? I did uh, have a little portion I wanted to, oh. to go over that is what to put in your first aid kit from a wilderness expert. A doctor, mm-hmm. and so um, I am being real nice, and I'm taking a little piece of this book to give to you. Okay, but I want you to buy it yes. because this is just a little snippet, mm-hmm. and he actually breaks down each of these and their purpose, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So he calls it the topical bandaging module. So mm-hmm. he recommends putting in this kit is TBM. Yeah. So when we talked about like what items to put in and what would you choose, this is from his mm-hmm. um, med kit. So he's got the spent second skin burn dressing. Mm-hmm. He's got gauze. It's high absorbent. Good gauze. Two ply three by three package. And then quick clot. Mm-hmm. We talked about that one. Uh, coverlet bandage strips. Adhesive tape. Waterproof. A SAM splint. Elastic bandages. Uh, two inch, three inch, and six inch wide ones. So it has multiple ones of those. So you can you know use that SAM splint to splint a fracture or whatever. Uh, maximum strength triple antibiotic ointment. Mm-hmm. Hibiclens. Um, I talked about before, like good, safe uh, cleaning agents, and this is like one of the best. Hibiclens. So throw a little of that in there. Opcon ophthalmic drops, hydrocortisone, mm-hmm. clotrimazole cream, uh, dental filling paste. Oh, wow. Dental supplies as indicated in chapter five. So that's why I got by the book. Mm-hmm. Um, protective gloves, nitrile ones, preferably, and then irrigation syringes. I talked about putting those in there. And then the surgical kit, which he has a needle holder, uh, add, add some f- uh, tissue forceps. There's ones with teeth and without. He has ethylon sutures, 5-0, 3-0, and then he has absorbable. So that's the thing. Like this book, I just wanted to share that little snippets because when you're building your own kit, like 
he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He's a wilderness survivalist. He's also a doctor. And this kit is a lot of what we talked about, but just the way he breaks it down and he goes into details on it is pretty awesome. So Rad. get this book because it just goes over tons of those little simple medical tools and tips that um, you're really not going to find without browsing through tons of books. Yeah. So it's a little little pitch for that book because I like it. So I, I was, wanted to show you him building his own and um, maybe you remembered all those things I just told you. So, I was trying to do a video on this the other day and just suddenly got a bloody nose. <laughs> I saw that. It's, all that information Leaking out. Leaking out of your brain. Yeah. Anyways, that's it. Thank you, guys. Um, We're going to do a post. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow um, and just say, hey, what do you love about the apocalypse? Because we want to hear from you. What is it that... Start thinking. Yeah, start thinking about it right now. Let's get that little little forum going. For sure. All right. Anything else, Cameron? No. All right. Stay survived.